Hey everyone, this is Emmanuel here. I uh, wanted to wish everyone a happy holiday season. And, and, and the real question is, is it, are you really happy? And are the things that are holding you back that are maybe not allowing you to feel fully fulfilled as you connect with family members, as you connect with people that you really care about? And I want to share with you that not all my Christmases have been amazing. Not all my Thanksgivings have been fantastic. The one thing that I do know is that there are there are always certain energies that are not allowing us to be our true selves, that are holding us back from really allowing us to be present and to not be so reactive in situations. I remember one time, like probably like six years ago, uh, I gave a shield to someone, an energetic shield, picture like a little bubble around you. And I said, I want you to go to Thanksgiving. Let me know how it goes. Um, because she had some very you know, toxic in-laws that she was about to interact with. And all of a sudden she emailed me back and said, hey, just letting you know, I had a great, th probably the best Thanksgiving I ever had. And in my mind, I totally forgot that I gave her a shield. I just said, great, like people around you were different. I said, no, it was that shield you gave me. Uh, they were still negative, but I didn't feel it like the way I used to. So some of you guys are empaths out there, similar to my wife, and just feel too much energies. And so I just wanna share with you that if you've been to, Thanksgiving or you've, you've you had your Christmas and it's been very dark or it's very lonely or it's, um, you know, there will be people that commit suicide during these holidays. It's a very serious subject, but there will be people that will take their lives because they would rather take their lives than deal with the feeling they're about to experience um, interacting with family members, not interacting with any family members, whatever it is. And uh, this is a very serious subject, but what I want to let you know Maybe you can share this with someone who's, who deals with this. Maybe it's you who deal with this, is that um, you've come this far for a reason. Probably it's to find out that there's more information inside your body that if we can just tap into it, you'll realize that you're not that person who is sad or depressed or overwhelmed. That's just a part of your body that's feeling that way due to something inherited or it's your childhood programming but that's not really who you are beneath that. Beneath that, you're someone who could enjoy yourself during the holidays or someone could be present during the holidays. But but the question is, how do we get to that buried person? So I want to give you guys uh, 10 different things that might be able to help you out. Uh, just certain ideas. Maybe you're an energy practitioner yourself and you're into energy medicine and you're like, oh, I got to look for these. Um, but whatever it is, these are just some examples of certain things. And some of these I get from other people's charts. You know, if they if they are a body code practitioner and they have different charts. So I want to give obviously credit to them. None of this stuff that I'm talking about right now is something that I made personally. So I don't want to say it was all me that came up with these ideas. These are just different people, but I just wanted to pick out some big ones that might be the issue. And so uh, hopefully these 10 things will, will benefit you. The first thing is <clears throat> a lot of people, when they think of like the conscious and subconscious, it's like two different things, you know, uh, even if you're a more advanced practitioner, you have your conscious, subconscious, and then like your inner child, like below that, right? Uh, that, that was left down there due to like love unreceived or not being heard, right? It's kind of like another separate fragmented consciousness. But what most people don't realize is also, I've learned from, from one of my mentors that there's also aspects of consciousness. There's sections of you, if you will. So your subconscious has like an, a negative army and a good army, you know, a bad army and a good army. And um, the good army is called permanent. Uh, consciousness. The bad ar army that you've developed over time is called impermanent. And some of these you could have absorbed from your family members. Some of these could have been inherited. Uh, some of these could be your own. And um, there's all these different types like money consciousness or financial consciousness or heartbroken consciousness. There's all these different versions of it. And uh, if I were to muscle test you and check on you, let's say we we're doing a, a session over the phone, I might find one of these. And you know, who knows, you might have a holiday consciousness or you might have a family consciousness or you might have a loneliness consciousness which all that really means is that there's parts of your life where you felt trauma with family holidays or being lonely and you've created this one army person will show up this, this part of your subconscious will show up and take the wheel for you uh, and you will be moved to the side. And now all of a sudden this person comes out and they feel depressed, anxious, overwhelmed, and you're not even in the driver's seat anymore. You know, and so that's called an aspect of conscious. You may have one of those. And if you muscle test it, you have to check the level of where it's at, um, level two, level five. The goal is to get it to level 10 and then just move it 
outside your body. So that way, whenever you're dealing with certain things in the holidays, this other person doesn't take over and start striving for you and you feel different. It's not you. It's a part of you, but it's not the true you, okay? The second thing is you might have an image, okay? So there's there's things, you know, you take a photo, there's images in your brain that you can basically, uh, let's say you take an image, a photo of the tree, but there's no presence there. Or you see your mom and dad getting angry, so there's a lot of confusion, but you're taking a photo of the tree and there's confusion in the background. I'll find these images that you've made, and they could be of an object, they could be of a moment, of an event, of a person. And as soon as you enter into the family realm in, in holiday season, these images might pop up in your mind. And the whole goal of that image is to make you feel the way you felt when you took that image, okay? So that's number two. You might have these in your subconscious that need to be removed by a practitioner, okay? Number three, you might have a memory field, okay? This is created by Dr. Brad. Memory field, all it is is just a bunch of memories. It's kind of like a cloud in front of your eyes. You know, it's something that you, it's like too easy to access, okay? And what happens is, is when you are dealing with life or circumstantial holidays, um, these little memory fields might pop up in front of your eyes and all you see is a bunch of holidays where it didn't go well. You might even label it like love unreceived or unsupported or um, guilt or shame. It's like sometimes you label these little clouds and um, you can't really see them, but they're energetically there. And um, if you don't remove them, it's hard to see what's happening in front of you. Because why? Because there's clouds in front of your eyes. In fact, interesting enough, if you have a lot of these, and if I find them, muscle tells us say we work together or someone works with you, sometimes it causes eye issues. Like you have, you, you have blurry eyes. Sometimes it's due to lots of trauma and your subconscious taps into them like too quickly. Number four, there's these energies called no will to's, okay? Uh, again, from the body code, no will to, there's no will to connect, no will to feel feelings. So maybe during some of these holidays, you created these because I'm like, I don't want to connect with anybody. I don't want to feel feelings from my mom who's always mean to me but nice to me during Christmas. And so the problem is that after you've left that, maybe you were four years old or nine years old, you created this energy over the weekend called no will to feel feelings or no will to connect with people. The problem is, is that now you've left age four, left nine, you still have that, these no will to feel something. And these technically can cause depression. Uh, so that's something else. Also, you might have a heart wall. Heart wall is uh, all the times your heart feels like it's going to break. Maybe there was a huge contentious situation that happened during the holidays. That that heart wall will remind you that of what you're dealing with. And it kind of make you feel numb. You know, like when you were a child, the, the colors were brighter. The sun was brighter. Um, just everything was different. Felt different, right? Like it's almost like you felt more. Um, as you grew up, let's say you've ne this is your first time hearing this thing called the heart wall. You're going kind of numb into festivities. So you can't feel the way you used to feel when you were a child waking up to Santa. You don't feel that anymore because you've gone through three breakups. You've gone through a divorce. You've gone through a, a six jobs that have fired you. So when you go to this event, you don't feel much. And that can make you depressed because our bodies were intended for you to feel things. I really feel like the root cause of depression and anxiety is because we don't feel the interconnectedness we actually have. I'll say that again. The reason why we feel depression and anxiety is because we don't feel the inner interconnectedness that we should have, that our bodies were basically created for. We were made to feel connected to everyone. Okay, um, number six, there's these things called oaths or pledges or promises or pacts. Sometimes our subconscious makes a promise to a father or to a mother or to our sibling to say like, I will never be happy because maybe you, you, you had a brother that's always made you feel miserable. So your subconscious is like, I made an oath to you that I'll never be happy. It's like, it's like, it's almost like your subconscious created that. So every time you see your brother, your brother-in-law, you made a pact and your body goes, oh, you have a promise with that person. It activates that promise in your body. And now you don't feel good at that party anymore. You see, so that needs to be removed as well. Um, another thing that's super powerful that I learned just uh, you know a few years ago is this thing called the light score. So a lot of us have, you know, if you believe in entities or evil spirits or things that are around you, um, they might be connected to you, right? And uh, you want to be at a hundred percent light score, like the highest you can you can be. Um, if you're at two percent, three percent, that means you probably feel depression, anxiety because you have so many things connected to you. Now the goal is to get to a hundred, but is there a way that your practitioner or myself? 
um, could be able to manipulate people's light scores around you to, to kind of affect and help them. Basically allowing the best version of your family to show up at the gatherings. And you can do that. You know, that's the only one thing I can do to kind of elevate other people that don't know who I am. Uh, imagine like having all your four family members that you're going to see a lot at the highest light score. So they're bringing the best version of themselves to you so you guys have a better, more harmonious relationship. So you got to check on light scores. Because if everyone's light score is down, this one's very low, this one's down, this one's low, that means there's outside influences affecting your family. They're not going to act their, their best selves. They're going to be mean. They're going to be crude. They're going to be depressing. And, and then that's going to make it even worse for you. So um, also number eight is uh, you want to check too if there's any... Uh, if you guys resonate and you have harmony with each other, you know, and so uh, it's very important that you don't, uh, that you resonate with everyone. Like, you know how like when someone walks into a room and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, there's something wrong with that person. Um, that's a real thing. It's you're feeling some sort of energy inside of them that doesn't make you resonate with them or have harmony with them. You can change those scores with people. So something I do with my clients all over the world is how much do you resonate with this person or how much do you have harmony with this person? And if you increase that score, you're less offensive to that person. Maybe there's certain energies that offend them that you have in your body. And so if you remove those, it's almost like you walk into a cleaner relationship. The next thing is um, number nine is uh, also you might have a cord, you know, maybe other people feel the same way you do. That's what I found out. A lot of your friends and family also feel the same way you do. And, um, but you don't want to feel that. So you'll, you might have these cords, which are these little like long tubes just kind of connected from your gut to their gut. And so when you get together, you're feeling their emotions beyond just them talking to you, but you're feeling their body sending you negative emotions. It might be too overwhelming for you. It's better to cut those cords from everyone there. So you have no cords around family, be um, sovereign in your own mental, emotional, and physical state. Um, so that's something I do with clients as well. And the last thing is this, is you might have this resistance score. So it's very interesting. So we, you want to have your arms open, but not pushing out. And sometimes your body will produce this resistance and you can check the score of it zero to hundred percent. And if you're, if you're right now having a hard time at your job, hard time with your relationships, then you want to enjoy yourself. The problem is your arms are already out, pushing your girlfriend away, pushing this job away. So now your arm's stuck out there, so you're resisting. You can check the percentage of how much you resist things that come to you. But guess what you're doing too? You're resisting the holidays. You're resisting meeting with people. It's like your arm's stuck. And so you wanna make sure that you move that. There's certain energies that produce that and you move that down to zero. And then all of a sudden now you're more open to that. So these are just different examples that I've used with my clients that I meet with during the week that I try to muscle test from long distance via proxy and I'll find these. And as, as soon as I remove it, all of a sudden, hey, my situation was different. Hey, everyone treated me different. Hey, I didn't feel so reactive during the situation or I didn't feel so depressed when this happened. So all I did, I didn't do anything special. All I did is I, I fine tuned their amazing system that they have and said, what's blocking them from feeling more happy during these holidays? And it may be any one of these things. There's multiple, there's thousands of more things, but these are just my top 10, my top 10 favorite ones that it could be. So uh, I'll just kind of go through the list again. It could be an aspect of consciousness, number one, some like, you know, holiday consciousness or family consciousness or lonely. And you have to remove all the trauma from that and then tell that consciousness to go bye-bye, which will, it's very simple to do that. Number two is you want to remove any image that, that puts you in a certain state. Number three, you might have these little memory fields, these little clouds of memories um, that kind of, you know, don't allow you to see what's really happening in front of you. Number four, no will to's, no will to connect, no will to feel feelings. Sometimes you had these in your childhood and now they're not allowing you to experience life and holidays the way you're supposed to. And they give depression too, no will to's or will to's. Um, heart wall, maybe you're, you're, you feel numb because you've created all these emotions over your heart. Now you don't feel the way you used to feel when you were a kid. Number six, you could have made an oath or a pledge or a promise to someone, to some family member, and as soon as you see them, you kind of become subservient to that person to, to react a certain way or to be a certain way, and it's not really who you are. You've changed, you've matured, you have a job now, or you have a career, you have a girlfriend, but you'll still kind of go into that oath or that pledge once you see that person. You can remove those. Um, light score, make sure everyone's bringing their best version of themselves. Um, 
Another one is to resonate. Do you resonate with people or are you offending them with certain energies inside your body? body? Uh, the last two, um, cords. You might have these cords. You might want to con disconnect them. And the last one is resistance to make sure that you, if you have resistance in your life, prepare to resist the good things in life too. So hopefully this gives you some little tips here. Uh, if you're a practitioner yourself, hey, like, hey, I haven't checked my resistance score or hey, I haven't checked this yet. Um, hopefully this helps you out this holiday season. I'm a big fan of like, um, one of my one of my friends, uh, Poppy, who's a psychologist, says the biggest I think issue that we have these holidays is that we have to fall under people's expectations of what a holiday looks like, and sometimes we just need to be real with people and say we're not doing well, we're suffering, or we're having a bad time, and just to not fix it right away, have the ability just to um, allow people to speak, and then you to just listen and just be with that person. But I feel like these are some ideas that if you do happen to be working with an energy practitioner, there's more hope than just listening. You can dive deeper so that the next holiday season is very, very different. And I wish that, like if you know someone right now who's dealing with depression, anxiety, loneliness, let them let them know about this video and maybe it'll help them out to open up their mind saying, oh, I thought it was just me. Or, oh, that makes more sense. Or, you know, like now I know it's not just me. We, that, that's the greatest message I can give to anyone that the way you're reacting to things is not really who you are. There's something below that that's less reactive, more peaceful, more more tranquil, that if you just kind of remove these and shed off these different things from your past, you're able to be there present the way you're supposed to. So uh, again, this is Emmanuel, certified um, body code practitioner and certified group energy facilitator. And hopefully this added some value to you. And I look forward to, feel free to comment below which one's your favorite tip. And I uh, look forward to, uh, adding more value to you guys during this holiday season. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.